Good morning. Welcome to the celebration of the Lord's Day on this day of Pentecost. You may have noticed it was Pentecost at St. Andrews. The order for the Holy Eucharist, Rite 2, begins on page 355. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. With you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they ask, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? 
Parthians, Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose. It's nine, only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents of the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 104, verses 25 through 35 and 37. It is found on page 6 of your pew bulletin, and we will read the psalm in unison. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is a Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice to the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Alleluia. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. Not 
and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sides too deep for words, and God who searches the heart knows what is in the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Word of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I did not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each heart be holy and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Many years ago, I had an aunt and uncle who were missionaries to Czechoslovakia back when it was Czechoslovakia. Uh, but they actually had to live in Vienna, Austria. And we got to spend a Christmas there once, all of us crammed in their little apartment, and it's a, a great memory. Well, one day, my little brother and I were in the back courtyard behind their apartment there being rowdy, throwing snowballs, too noisy, I suppose, because this woman came out and began to yell at us in German. I mean, really letting us have it right in our faces, and we couldn't understand a word she was screaming at us. She stormed off and then returned with two snow shovels. Well, we knew what that meant. We spent the next hour shoveling snow for this woman. We had no idea who she was. And at one point, my brother asked me, wasn't Hitler Austrian? And I said, yes. And he said, that makes sense. And then the same woman, same woman came back, but this time with two steaming styrofoam cups of hot chocolate. She kissed us on the heads and walked away. Lost in translation, but we found a way to speak. Fast forward in time a bit and I mowed lawns and bus tables all year so I could go on the high school senior trip to Paris, France. Me and a few friends found ourselves out late one night there looking for the part of town the sponsors told us to stay away from. <laughs> See, we heard that French girls didn't care if you were on the football team or not which was perfect for guys like us. But we were terribly lost about one o'clock in the morning asking people for directions and they didn't want to speak English. So I turned to my friend and I said, haven't you had like three years of French? And he said, I don't really pay attention. And I said, well, can you at least try here because we're in a desperate situation. So he stopped the next gentleman. They had an exchange and then we kept walking. I said, well, what did you say? He said, I asked him where the bathroom was. That's the only thing I know how to say. <laughs> Finally, we approached an older man he couldn't or wouldn't speak English either, but took out a pen and under a street lamp drew circles and lines on a subway map showing us the way. Lost in translation, but we found a way to speak. In my mid-twenties, I was with a group of people working at an orphanage in Lima, Peru. Most of the children there discarded, cast aside because they were born with some kind of physical disability, many of them unable to speak, and those that could spoke a language very different from our own. And you know, the whole time I was there, I kept bumping into my own entitledness. I kept rubbing shoulders with my own selfishness. I kept wishing I was anywhere else but there until the last day we gathered to say our goodbyes and a boy with a crooked leg and a twisted arm limped over to my friend, buried his little head in his chest and began to weep saying, stay, stay. Stay. Lost in translation, but we found a way to speak. Has something like that ever happened to you? What's going on there in those moments? What's happening? Do we chalk it up to human decency or kindness? Do we refer to it as the better angels of our nature? Luke, the author of the gospel and the book of Acts, calls it something else. See, Luke calls it the Holy Spirit. I know, I know, you're sitting there thinking, that's a bit much, don't you think, Jared? I mean, really, the Holy Spirit? Because this is Pentecost Sunday, we'll let you talk about the Holy Spirit today, but don't get carried away. Don't make us hold hands and close eyes, please. I mean, this is the Episcopal Church, after all. Let's not get too enthusiastic. But that's Luke. And for Luke, the Holy Spirit isn't some ethereal third person of the Trinity who occasionally stirs our emotions. No, for Luke, the Spirit is active and present and moving. The Spirit hovers over the watery chaos in Genesis and bring forth life. The Spirit is what drove the prophets of old to confront the temple and the throne. And who put the story of Jesus into motion? The Holy Spirit. You see, for Luke, the Holy Spirit gets us to move in a certain way in this world, to act and be a particular and a peculiar kind of people, no matter how small or large that act may be. And yes, the Spirit even gets us to speak, or dare we say, to proclaim the resurrection of Christ and the love of God at work in our world. 
I mean, you see it happening right here in Acts chapter 2 this morning. There's a rushing wind, a fire. It's a disturbance, really. An outpouring of the Spirit upon those gathered in the upper room on Pentecost. All kinds of people, all kinds of languages, all walks of life from all kinds of places. It's like what God spoke through the prophet Joel. I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall preach. Did you hear that, parents? Your sons and daughters. Your old people will dream dreams and your young people will have visions. Did you hear that, millennials? Got to listen to those baby boomers. Baby boomers can't ignore the millennials. Even on the male and female slaves, I will pour out my spirit. Do you hear it from the beginning? It's about inclusivity. It's about liberation. It's about freedom. That's what's going on in Acts chapter 2, a pouring out of the spirit on all flesh, sons, daughters, young, old, everybody. And I don't care about the facticity of it. I don't care about the details of the language. I don't care about the historicity of the moment. Don't get all hung up on that. I don't think Luke wants us to get hung up on that. He's trying to bring us into a narrative here. He's trying to show us something about the Holy Spirit. That is to show us that even people once lost in translation can find a way to speak to one another. And even more, can find a way to speak to the world. But what do they say? What do they say, especially to those standing around with their critiques and their sneering and their accusations? Those people aren't right. Look at them, they say. They've just had too much wine already. But then Peter, thick skull Peter, y'all remember Peter the fisherman? Peter, the one who denied even knowing Jesus at one point? That Peter encountered the Spirit. He steps into the crowd, and it's a little further in our reading that we have this morning in our bulletin, but he steps out and he says some things. First, he says, listen, we are not drunk. I just love that. The first recorded sermon we have in the church begins with the line, we are not drunk. <laughs> it's like from the very beginning, there's this acknowledgement that we're all supposed to look and act a little funny in this thing we call the church. But he goes on to speak, no to proclaim the life and ministry of Jesus, the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Christ, and how all of us get to participate in that risen life, a life that looks like Jesus, a life of love, of forgiveness, of grace, of justice and mercy. Amidst all these languages, Peter speaks the language of the Spirit, and it's going to change things. Have y'all noticed or heard these languages that are being spoken a lot lately? They seem to be competing languages and they're getting louder and louder. I'm noticing it more and more. I guess they've been around for a while. I can hear it floating over from other tables in restaurants. I've heard them spoken in bars and in coffee shops. I was at my kid's band concert the other day and I heard them coming from a couple rows back. It's the languages of party lines and partisan allegiance and religious bickering. It's the languages I used to just catch every once in a while on the news and it often rings with this tone of bitterness and cynicism and cruelty, but it seems to be growing and sometimes I'm tempted to speak one of these languages. So pervasive, I'm wondering if Rosetta Stone will begin to publish courses on them so we can become more fluent in our language of choice. So pervasive, the children are starting to pick it up at the dinner table and then taking it to school with them the next day. So pervasive, you can go to a lot of different churches on a Sunday morning and hear it spoken passionately from behind the pulpit, which is strange to me because it's not the language of the church. It's not the gospel. It's not the language of people trying to live and love the way Jesus did in this world which makes me wonder if there's an opening here. It makes me wonder if we were more attentive to the Spirit. It makes me wonder what might happen. What actions would we take in our community? What shape would our lives take? What would our relationships begin to look like? What words might we share? See, I'm starting to think there's something about old St. Luke's Holy Spirit. I'm starting to wonder if the Holy Spirit is trying to show us something. I'm wondering if the Holy Spirit is trying to show us that all of us, lost in translation, can find a way to speak to each other. And even more, find a way to understand one another.
Amen. Let us respond to gospel and sermon with the words of the baptismal covenant found on page 304. Page 304. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? The Spirit of God aids us in our weakness, teaches us to pray, and moves in our community. In the power of the Spirit, let us offer prayers to God for the needs, concerns, and hopes of all the world. For peace from on high and for our salvation. Glory and praise to you, Lord God. For the peace of the whole world, especially for Israel and Palestine, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all. Glory and praise to you, Lord God. For the world and its leaders, our nation and its people. Glory and praise to you, Lord God. For this holy gathering, both those attending in person and those attending online. For all ministers of this parish, including the Evans, Lawrence, Britton, Mullins, Bush, Keesling, and Litchfield families. For our parish staff, especially Kenda and Shannon, and our clergy, Chris, Courtney, Dave, Dee Dee, Jared, Joe, Mildred, Miriam, and Tammy. For our Bishop Scott, for all of the clergy and people in our diocese, especially those involved in special ministries and non-parochial clergy, Gary Bilby, Sister Bridget Carroll, Claire Field, Monty Jones, Kara Leslie, Thomas Lewis, Tammy Logsdon, and Rich Nelson. 
We pray to you, O Lord. For those in positions of public trust and leadership, especially for Joe, our president, for John and Ted, our senators, and for Ronnie, our representative, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. For our loved ones serving in the armed forces, including Robert, Steve, Danny, Aaron, and Gary, for all those in need, the suffering and the oppressed, travelers, refugees, and prisoners, for our families, friends, and neighbors, for all who have commended themselves to our prayers, especially Candy Barlaw, Bill and Deacon Rose Ann Smith, Bill Sutherland and family, John and Rose Martha Tyson, the Waters family, Antoinette, Haley and family, Jessica and family, Nelia, Terry, Tom, and Billy Hurtle, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For those who have died, including Martha Crabtree Babb, Alex Rushing, Roy Northrup, Rachel Mays, and Shane Mays, and for those who mourn, including the Crabtree family, the Rushing family, the Northrup family, and the Mays family, especially Bill and Kenneth Mays. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the community of St. Andrews and remembering all of the great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us carrying the good news from one generation to the next, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord God, who transforms our lives and makes us new. Hear our prayers, which we offer in confidence, and breathe upon us with your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, precious. Welcome to the celebration of the Lord's Day on this wonderful day of Pentecost. Before we do our anniversary birthday and children's blessing, we have another blessing of Andy Earthman. Andy, will you come forward? Andy has, uh, is a graduate of high school. We've known him since he, he, oh, he was very small. And now he is not very small. And we also have online Derek Dyer, from graduating from high school. Andy, we'd like you to have this cross from us to remind you of how much we love you. And if we will all say together the blessing of the graduate. It says clergy, but I think it's better when we all do it. May you remember that God is above you, watching, watching over, over you, you as a good shepherd, that God is below you, ready to lift you up in your weakest moments, that God is behind you to give you encouragement when you want to give up and turn back. God is in front of you, calling you forward in faith, even when you can't see how it's going to work out. God is beside you, holding your hand, no matter what you are going through. But most of all, God is within you, as close as every breath you take. 
and that, my brother, is, is what makes all the difference. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Thank you, Earth Peace. Thank you, Vanessa. We're continuing with blessings this morning. Do we have any anniversaries or birthdays this morning to celebrate? I know we have at least one birthday girl. <laughs> okay. You can just say Jamie Thamer. Okay. We're also celebrating the birthday of Jamie Thamer today. Janie, Janie Thamer. She used to be our assistant headmaster over at the school and has moved. All right. We will say the birthday blessing all together. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may thy peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we have an anniversary here? Okay. And here. Oh, two anniversaries. All right. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully look with his favor upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. Right, next we have our children's blessings. If the children would come forward, please. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna start right here with you. Okay. Father of generous fathers, we thank you for the gift of children. With each child, you refresh your covenant with our father Abraham. In each child, you confirm our call to be stewards of creation. We will pray your blessing on each child here today. Teach them to love courage and to shun fear. Sharpen their eyes to see you at work in your world. Seal their tongues to speak words of love and reconciliation. Turn their faces in charity toward their neighbors and fill each one with confidence in your steadfast love. This we ask, blessed Father, in the name of your child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. The announcements having to do with the life of our parish are in your bulletins on page 17. Just a reminder, we are continuing to have Holy Eucharist and we will throughout the year on Wednesday nights. Holy Eucharist and Holy Unction at 5.30 in the Children's Chapel. Uh, Camp Quarterman is coming up soon. If you have not registered a child or you wish to, the addresses are here, and also, if we need to help with with the the fee for children, I mean for Quarterman Camp, please uh, let us know at the at the office. Also, we're still signing up for 20 minutes a year. If you didn't hear Jared's sermon about 20 minutes a year, you can hear it in its uh, in its corporeal self right there at that address. And we have lots of people signing up and we're doing very varied and interesting things. So it, it's going to make all of us want to be children and go out there and play. And on the dates of June 9th, June 14th, and August 11th, after the Holy Eucharist, we will have 
uh, trucking at St. Andrews. And I hope all of you will come and I hope you will invite your other community outside of St. Andrews to come and join you. We'll have food and we'll be collecting for a specific charity and we'll have live bands and we'll be dancing on the patio and it, yeah, right. And it is, <laughs> we're gonna dance together. It's just a perfect uh, celebration for the summer. So one Wednesday night in June the 9th, uh, July 14th and August 11th. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows unto the Most High.
All things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his, of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting, up the, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his, hands upon, his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to you. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
The liturgy continues with a post-communion prayer found on page 366. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Praise God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Beautiful, sir.